again. In this video I'd like to introduce you the great court of the Royal Hungarian Army's officers and generals. In the early Regency age army great courts were almost the same as the monarchy ones. The most significant difference was the new greenish brown color, the so-called field brown, of the fabric they were made from. The base for all great coats in the Hothi era was the enlisted coat. This one was discussed thoroughly in the description in the regulations, then were there mentioned any differences of other army great coats. However, enlisted coats are no subject to this presentation. Let's see what we have here. An officer's great coat was made from fine coat fabric and had a length it ended at the middle of the shin of the officer. The coat's collar was made as a fold-down one, its tips rounded. Until 1940, the collar's upper layer was made from dark coffee brown velvet, when a related regulation changed it to dark green fabric. The latter version can be seen in this image. On the collar we can find a 5-pointed collar patch with a small, that means 15 mm in diameter, Button depicting the Hungarian sacred crown each side that has shown the wearer's branch color. It was made from the appropriate colored cloth or velvet. The front side has six pairs of 26 mm gilded figured buttons and buttonholes for the buttons on the right side. In wartime, all buttons on the great coat had to be replaced by matte brown buttons used on enlisted coats. The officer's great coat has one covered pocket on each side below the waistline. For officers equipped with a saber, the left pocket has an extra hole for the hung saber's handle and tassel to be left out and visible. The back side of the great coat has a double wrinkle just from below the collar, and the back is split in two for the last 50 cm to make walking or marching free and unobstructed. To close that slit, five covered small buttons and buttonholes are available. Above the slit, a waistband with two large figured buttons can be seen. All the edges on the front side, the sleeve roll-ups, the pocket covers and the waistbands have a piping in the same color as the collar patches, that is, the wearer's branch color. Officers had no rank signs on their great coats until 1940. An observer could only decide whether the person in the coat is enlisted, an NCO, an officer or a general. In 1940, a decree took shoulder boats for great coats in order to let soldiers' ranks be more easily recognizable when wearing a great coat. As suddenly as they were ordered to be worn, in 1941 they were revoked from order as another regulation came into effect with a cheaper method for signing ranks. The new regulation ordered soldiers of any ranks to wear stripes on both sleeves of their great coats, colors, numbers and width of these stripes had shown ranks easily and unmistakably. Officers' stripes were made from gilded soutache and COs wore silver stripes. As I also have a general's coat in my collection, I would like to show its differences from officer's one as well, with a comparison and some historical additives. This coat is a little bit special, as it belonged to a military judge general, not a simple infantry or artillery general, and that's why it has a lizard in velvet collar patches instead of scarlet red cloth ones. As we can see, general's great coats are made from even finer fabric. They are usually private purchase made with great care by famous civilian or uniform tailors. They have a light scarlet lining instead of the cloth one and uh, from 1928 generals had permission to leave the two upper buttons on their great coats unbuttoned to make that lining visible. It had to be something like this. The collar patches on the general's great coat were obviously larger than the officer's ones, with an embroidered laurel branch on the right side and an oak branch on the left side. The size of the collar patches has been reduced in 1941, though in 1943 larger patches came in use again. The rank signs of general's great coats were also different from officer's ones. They wore the stripes as lower rank personnel did as well, but also had a crown in an oak and laurel wreath above the stripes. 
This crown and wreath was usually embroidered on a piece of coat fabric and soon on the sleeve, but this coat has the embroidering in the sleeves fabric itself and that is another reason we can call it special for. The infantry officer's one has a name tag in the inner pocket. The general's one has no such identification, but rank and the size of the collar patches narrow the circle to two or three persons who could have worn it. Sorry folks, that's all for today. I hope you liked this short presentation. Don't forget, you can subscribe for this channel and you're free to comment the video and you're welcome to share them too. You may also like my previous videos, you can find them easily in this channel. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye.